What's going on engineers? In this video, I wanted to talk about why I use Linux in 2020 as opposed to something like Windows or OS X. Unlike some of my other content, this video is not intended to bash OS X or bash Windows. It's more to focus on the merits of Linux and what's important to me as an engineer and why Linux serves those needs better than the other operating systems. For me, the choice to use Linux can be summed up in one word, and that's efficiency. When I'm at my workstation, it's usually because I'm doing something business related, and that could be YouTube, that could be client projects, or personal projects. But what all three have in common is that I want to do them in a very efficient manner. This means having the right tools, having the right environment, and having everything run really fast and be really stable. There's four topics that I want to touch on that fall under efficiency, and that's this idea of great resource management, software, a batteries included kind of environment, and then a unified environment. And I'm going to talk about each of those in depth. Before I expand on these four topics, any OS X users that are watching will note that a lot of the things that are great in Linux are also great in OS X. However, the simple reason behind using Linux over OS X in 2020 is that I can't easily use customized hardware with OS X. As some of you may know, it is possible to use customized hardware with OS X by way of this thing we call the Hackintosh, except it's not easy to do, and there are kind of some gray areas with it. At the very least with a Hackintosh, there's going to be a license agreement that's going to be in violation. At the very worst, there could be some copyright infringement. And if you've watched my workstation video, you know that I run a multi-GPU 8 monitor setup, and I just question whether or not a Hackintosh would even support that anyways. So for those reasons, it's just not something I could use. So back to the four main topics, with the first one being resource management. With Linux, the resource management is top tier. And when I say resource management, I'm talking about its CPU usage, I'm talking about its memory usage. I'm also talking about things like background processes that could bog down a machine. Of course, the Linux kernel itself is very efficient, but once you tack on a desktop environment on top of it, that's when you can start adding a little bit of resource-hungry processes. To combat this, you have your choice of any desktop environment that you want. I particularly use XFCE because it's very, very lightweight. Now, I know there's other desktop environments that are even lighter weight than XFCE, which would actually make XFCE look heavyweight, but XFCE, as far as I'm concerned, is a good middle ground that is both lightweight but also flexible for other things. But base XFCE isn't even enough for me. I go one step further. I disable all transparency. I disable all effects and animations. And I just get rid of all the frills. And I just have just a, just a bare bones desktop environment. And here again, I do all this to serve one primary purpose. Maximum performance, maximum efficiency. The next point is the software. I love that it's all free. I love that it all comes from a central repository. And I also love that the stuff that doesn't come from a central repository then comes from GitHub. The problem I have with downloading software to other operating systems is invariably you've been on a site that looks like this and it's just littered with ads. It's actually three download buttons, you know, two are ads and then one's the actual download button. And then even when you go to download the software you want, you get a little pop-up that says you should actually download this instead. And now you're downloading something that you didn't even want in the first place. So it's just, it's just kind of a poor experience. I, I don't like that this is the way it is and this is not the way it is on Linux. I also like the software that I get from the central repository updates automatically. That just makes it, you know, here again, it makes it efficient. The next topic is the batteries included aspect of Linux, and that is everything you need is already there. And additionally, there's no cost for extra features. Just a point of frustration that I dealt with several months back is I was working on a Docker project and I did it all on Linux and I wanted to make sure that somebody could run it on Windows. So I took a laptop that I had that was dual booting, both Windows 10 and Linux and I load up into Windows 10 and I went to download Docker, got that installed, but when I went to run it, it said, sorry, you can't run it because you don't have Hyper-V on your system. And I was thinking to myself, okay, well, let's go get Hyper-V, but as it turns out, you can't get Hyper-V unless you have the pro version of Windows. And all I had was the home version, so I guess that's that. I guess I couldn't do anything. And what was awful about that situation is I actually never even tested on Windows because I, I didn't have a, a Windows 10 Pro anywhere. Now, what I will say is this was about a year ago. My understanding is that with Windows Subsystem for Linux, this is less of a problem, but at the time it didn't work. So it was a problem then, but that's when I needed it. But the point is with Linux, there's no such thing as like Linux enhanced, you know, that costs $50 and that's what lets you do things like run Docker. And here again, efficiency. Not only did I waste a lot of time getting things set up on Windows, but I wasted all that time only to find out that I couldn't actually do what I needed to do. And the final point is this idea of a unified environment. 
And this one's kind of specific to me. As many of you know, I'm not a Microsoft guy at all. I don't do any Microsoft development, and therefore there is a 0% chance that I would ever have to log into a Windows server to run my application. So because all my cloud servers are Linux servers and my workstation is Linux and my laptop is Linux and everything's Linux, I can have this unified environment that I can work on Linux and then I can deploy to Linux. As many of you know, Linux plays nice with pretty much everything or at a minimum, it tries to play nice with everything, but it really, really plays nice with other Linux machines. So just as a quick summary, resource management is all about efficiency in having a system that is really fast and really stable. Efficiency in software is about getting software quick, having an update. Efficiency in this idea of batteries included is that you already have the tools, already on the system. You don't have to pay extra or worry about missing features. And then efficiency in a unified environment, being able to work in the same environment as the environment that you're going to deploy your software to. I can think of many other minor reasons, but these are the four primary ones that come to mind that deal with what's important to me, which is being really efficient and getting work done fast and smooth. For those of you watching this video who have either never used Linux or maybe haven't used it in several years, now's a great time to get back into it or check it out for the first time. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the state of Linux in 2020. Anyway, that's all I have for you. If you have any questions or if you're a person who uses Linux already day to day and you want to let me know in the comments exactly what's really important to you about Linux and why you use it, you should definitely mention that below in the comments. Other than that, hope to see you on the next video. Take care.